Let me let me start recording. Oh, welcome back to Theme Park Wizard. We're here with my best pals, George and Christopher. I almost forgot your name. Orange Girl Fifty Five, and at Disney George. Is that your YouTube channel? Uh, Disney Family Man Twenty. Disney Family Man One Two Three. We're gonna talk about lots of great stuff. Mostly all Disney, especially with Rise of the Resistance and the drones and all this great stuff. So let's get started. Rise of Resistance. What do you guys think? I well, I know George. You said you you tried not to watch it, but you had to. I had to. It was calling to me. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. I mean. I, I mean, I was waiting for the content because I didn't know exactly what the day that it was going to open at Walt Disney World. I knew it was at the very beginning of December. And then when I uh, rechecked the date, it was going to be December 5th. I thought, okay, the internet's going to blow up any minute with all these vlogs and <laughs> reviews and everything. So I thought, I'm just going to stay away from it because that's how I usually am, especially uh, with something that big with a lot of hype, like even with like movies and everything, I try to stay away from reviews and everything. but. I just kept on seeing video after video and I thought, I just have to see this for myself. <laughs> like really see of what Disney was describing all this time. It, is it up to par from what the Imagineers were saying? And I got to tell you, I am very impressed. I was being thrilled just watching it on the screen. So <laughs> I can imagine what it's going to be like to actually physically be there and experience it. Well, you know, the cool, the cool thing about it is that like, it's like it's multiple rides in one and so it's kind of like the, it's it's weird it's kind of like haunted mansion in a way because like you know how you kind of you walk through and then you go in the in the stretching room and then you get off and then you go into the doom buggy it's kind of <laughs> like a new the next generation of of, of haunted mansion in a, in a weird way where mm -hmm. you get into like this the the I don't want to get into too many spoilers, but you get into one vehicle, you get off, you get into the next vehicle, you get off, you get into the next vehicle. It, it's pretty cool. I, I really, yeah, I watched it too, George. I was really impressed with what I saw. I mean, this And this that's what makes incredible. it more realistic. And I hope Disney continues that pattern with their rides in the future, because with something like this, if you were to just go to a loading area, get on a vehicle, and it just takes you scene by scene by scene, well, it's like, okay, well, I'm here on Batu. Oh, and then all of a sudden, magically, I turn into another room and I'm on the, the Star Destroyer. You know, like, it's like, yeah. how did I even get there? So I love how there's a process that, as you said, not to give too many spoilers away, but where when you're on one vehicle, it depicts of how you end up, you know, being in the presence of the First Order and coming across to Kylo Ren and everything. So I, I love how they're, it's almost like you're in a scene from the movie. And yeah. you, you could say that about a lot of Disney attractions, but this one I can honestly say, it's not even just one scene. It almost is like you're in your own mini Star Wars episode. Mm -hmm. and I like how the, the cast members, they're good act, or at least the ones I saw in the video, were pretty good actors. Like they're, they, they just pulled you away as you really captured and, then uh, also, I've always loved trackless ride systems, and I was always praying we get one here. Besides the Ouija's, that doesn't really count. But this is like a true trackless ride system, so they're forced. Like there's no like dead areas because it spins around, so there's this theming all around you. So it's really like a movie set. Now I want to ask you guys because Ethan, you just brought up about like the cast. There's like a number of cast members that are really involved in the attraction and. They work, you know, with the attraction. They're part of the attraction itself. And Rise of the Resistance for Walt Disney World right now, it's not part of the extra magic hours. And a lot of people were speculating that it's because it's new and they have to get everything together. But I also wonder if it has to do because there has to do a lot with cast member interaction, <laughs> that that could be why that they're not having it part of the extra magic hours. Oh yeah, like there's schedules that could be. Yeah, there's not not many scheduled people at that time. That could be true. Also, maybe they. I don't know why. Yeah, that's probably a good reason why. Because that's the thing. Let's say at least fifty or more. They have to get to work at like six a.m. or something. 
Yeah. Might as well should just sleep there. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I could be wrong, but when I was a kid going to like we would we before I had an annual pass when I was a kid, we would go to Disneyland like once or twice a year, like on birthdays and things like that. And we would stay at the hotel and do the magic hour thing. If I'm not mistaken, and correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but if I'm not mistaken, I don't think new attractions were ever included in Magic Hour even back then. Um, I, I think that's kind of uh, something they've always kind of avoided uh, for some reason. But Because um, I remember, and the reason I say this is I remember staying at the hotel back when Toontown opened. And, oh, wow. and we, I, I remember being disappointed because Fantasyland was open, but Toontown was closed for Magic Hour. So I, I think it's like just kind of like it's always kind of been that way with the Magic Hour. I don't think they've ever really had the new stuff open during that time. And again, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but um, that I, I, just, I kind of believe that's the case. Have you guys, do you guys remember that at all? Or do you guys? Hmm. I do well, remember a lot of rides and attractions that start out that aren't part of the extra Magic Hours. I mean, there's even rides that didn't even start out with Fast Passes. You know, but um, it definitely will – I'm very curious to see how this particular attraction plays out because I, from watching the video, this is no ordinary classic <laughs> Disney spinner or dark ride. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. This is it's pretty definitely crazy. definitely not the, the uh, magic carpets of Aladdin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely not. I mean, it blew my mind. Like, like you said, George, like I was watching this on YouTube and even on YouTube, I was very, very impressed. And that's not video on the screen. You know, I couldn't even imagine being in that vehicle, experiencing all that stuff. It, it's going to be mind blowing. I, I really cannot wait. I'm so sad. We have to wait till January for this to open in Anaheim. <laughs> that's terrible. But those whatever mistake they made. But apparently, I guess it's that they. I've been hearing Disneyland's runs better than theirs, so we should have less downtime. Should love. But um, but yeah, I can't wait for this thing. Now, what's what do you think will be next for Galaxy's Edge? Oh, sorry, you guys are frozen for a second. I'm like, is my connection bad? <laughs> but, so, do you think we'll get the drones and the joy? The droids, like every like, I've heard that when this opens, now we'll finally get, start getting the droids and everything, all the entertainment. So, what do you think? I think Galaxy's Edge, after with Rise of the Resistance and everything, they have their two big e-ticket attractions. They have the layout out of the, out of the land. Now they just have to fill in the meat and potatoes, so to speak. And from the very beginning, that was my only critique with Galaxy's Edge is I want to see more interaction that if I'm on this very unique, distinctive planet, I want to see their life forms i want to see droids i want to see aliens i want to i want to see a giant bantha walking around for crying out loud <laughs> <laughs> yeah you, you know it's funny um they had that really cool the, the, the x-wing the x-wing drones you know you reported on it ethan a few days ago with um mm -hmm. with the grand opening and i think the following day i don't know about today but i think the following day they had the the x-wings for the general public and I thought that was pretty cool. I hope that's a sign that these X-Wings are going to stick around for a while and they're going to have them at least do them like maybe on the weekends or something like mm -hmm. that where it's like, you know, the average guest can experience it. And then also there was that really cool Ray and Kylo Ren lightsaber duel yes, I on the grand opening. That. I think they also did that the, the day after as well. Um, so I, I just hope that, you know, they continue to, 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 to have this entertainment. I hope they add the droids, like George was saying, that they were originally planned for the land. And I think if they can do that and add that kinetic energy, I think it would really, the, the land would be perfect. It would be absolutely perfect. We already have a super immersive area, two great attractions. Just give us the kinetic energy with the, with the droids and the aliens and the X-Wings, and we're A++. I think we're good to go then. Well, and I watched uh, the documentary on Disney Plus, The One Day at Disney, and there was a segment on there where they're talking with an Imagineer who worked on one of the droids that they did a test run in the park that interacts with the guest for Galaxy's Edge. 
So that just kind of made me think that, okay, well, if they're adding that into the documentary series, they're not letting it go. They're reminding people, hey, there are these droids. You know, they're not, Disney's not going to tease something that they don't have something planned in the future. So I kind of hope that they're going to feed off of that and still bring those interactive droids to Galaxy's Edge. Definitely. I did see that too, by the way. And that was pretty interesting. She was even talking about how they're working on artificial intelligence. Yeah. Like oh they said, they're working on like where they could actually like really depict each person individually. Like where they will get like up close and personal, know your name, say your name. And it's like, wow. <laughs> it's pretty scary stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're going to be stealing our credit card numbers in a second. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, excuse me, R two D two just robbed my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> All these charges from C three PO. What? What is he buying? <laughs> but at least I think Disneyland or someone got a video or a picture of the Coke Joy thing that Disney World has at Disneyland. So I think, and apparently it's a Sprite one too. So at least we'll get those. I think. I think the opening weekend at Rise of the Resistance, we'll get those Coke Joy things. They have a Disney World, which seemed pretty cool. I like it. Well, yeah, those droids are really awesome. And it's cool because they didn't just take like the the standard ODV carts, the outdoor mm -hmm. vending carts, mm -hmm. and just slap like, you know, like a Batu themed <laughs> logo on it or something. I mean, these are really fleshed out. Like they look like ride vehicles, basically. The Coke mm -hmm. carts, they look like ride vehicles. I mean, they're so well themed and they have the, the really cool droid on the end of them. I love those things. And they're, and they're very colorful because they have the, the, all the red, you know, the red for the Coke and they have the green for the Sprite. I think it's mm -hmm. kind of nice to have the color in, into this area because Batu, at least in Anaheim, isn't very colorful. There's not a lot of vibrant yeah, colors like that. So it adds a lot to the area, I think. You know, it's a little touch, but it, it makes a big difference. Yeah, and apparently, I guess with the some that they're remote controlled so they'll be like driving themselves throughout the land which is pretty cool i like that i like to see that that is pretty cool but, yeah. and then but now since this is open now uh there's a couple other things that i'm sure disney will want to focus on at least in disneyland with three uh, classic refurbishments and some i guess not some mysterious projects happening in tomorrowland um uh, the, but the new entrance um, I don't know if I asked you, but what I know you did a couple videos on this, uh, Chris. What do you guys? What do you think of the new entrance for tomorrow? Um, I I like it. I know a lot of people don't care for it. I actually really really like it. I think that people are looking at the concept art and they're sort of judging it based on the art, but you can't really do that because if you notice, they they like recycled some old art for like the. Um, the Astro Orbiter, when that whole thing was like a gold color scheme, which it no longer it no longer has that color scheme. So, it, it, you know those, those white, those new like you know retro white looking um, you know planners are up against the old 1998 Tomorrowland color scheme. It looks kind of odd, but if you look at our Astro Orbiter now, it's mostly silver and blue. You know, it's not mm -hmm. the same color scheme as the one that you see in the art. So I think it's going to look a lot better. I think Disney kind of messed up on that. They should have given us an all new art and utilized the, the current color scheme. And I think it would have looked better. I, I just think their choice of, of, of like recycling that old color scheme art for the Astro Orbiter and everything made it look like it clashes. But it's not going to do that in real life. We don't have that gold anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I thought they just kind of recycled it, but I guess maybe I also think they maybe did that because to show that to you know, show that contrast, like here's the new part, you know, like to make it make it kind of like stand out more. Like here's the white stuff. That's the new <laughs> part. Ignore all that other stuff in the back. The, the contrast makes it pop out. So look at this brand new entrance type of thing. Yeah. I feel like that's maybe they're going. Yeah, and I also feel like that what they're doing with Tomorrowland is they're planting the seeds. <clears throat> they're starting to prep the area for a new Tomorrowland. So right now, <laughs> those new planners are going to coexist with the Astral Orbiter, but we don't know the long game for that. So it's possible the Astral Orbiter might not even be around in five years, and, and, and Disney knows that, 
and you know that's part of their plan so we have to kind of wait and see i also just did a video it hasn't been uploaded yet it'll be uploaded later today but on the imagineering story episode three at the very very end i don't know if you guys have noticed this but joe Rody is is actually like standing over a model of our Tomorrowland, and he's looking at it and he he removes the uh, star wars launch bay building almost like he's looking to see how they can fit something or or the, the space available it was it's very very i, I did notice some kind of as did i, I was like that? wait is that our tomorrow i think i as i think i kind of questioned myself I'm like wait a second is that is that our? i was like what's he doing over there is that us because that's all the people who were tracks and i was like wait a second he and then yeah he did he took it off i'm like interesting yeah so i have a feeling it's like the old saying you know too many coincidences aren't a coincidence there's mm -hmm. obviously a lot of smoke going on here with Tomorrowland. There's got to be fire. There's a lot of rumors, a lot of talk. I, I think something is happening with Tomorrowland. So the new entrance, I think, is just planting the seeds, prepping the area for the inevitable big revamp coming up. I, you know, that, that's how I see it. I have some really high hopes for the next D23 Expo. I mean, because I knew going into this one, it was all going to be about Epcot. And just like with especially your guys uh tomorrowland at disneyland just like with epcot over on this side eventually it's going to need a tremendous facelift so i think once now that they'll still announce things with epcot little by little with the progression of everything but i think we got pretty much the bulk of it at this expo but i really think the next one it's going to be i actually think a double between tomorrow your guys tomorrowland and fantasyland yeah, you know, Fantasyland, I, you know, it's funny, for a long time now, I've been saying I think Fantasyland will be the next land at Disneyland to get a major expansion, just because, I, you know, Bob Iger and Disney in general, they're very obsessed with franchises <laughs> and IP, and it just seems like Fantasyland has all the, all the heavy hitters in terms of the IP, right? It has Frozen, especially with Frozen 2 that just came out. It has Beauty and the Beast, which was a billion dollar live action movie. It has all the fairy tales, all those princess movies, which are an industry in and of themselves. So I thought, okay, they're gonna do, they're gonna do Fantasyland first. That's where all the, the merch sales are. That's where the franchises are. But now, I don't know. I mean, now we're seeing so much, there's so much rumors and so much talk now about Tomorrowland. I feel like that might really be the first one out the gate after Mickey and Minnie. Um, I they're think really they're gonna of, they're gonna kind of go simultaneously together. I think with one there's gonna be the other because with that long rumor of the uh, the subs and the the motorboat section coming out, which they said that that wouldn't even be part of Tomorrowland. That was gonna be the extension of Fantasyland. So in order to cut that part out of Tomorrowland, they're might as well just gonna just rip the whole Tomorrowland out minus Space Mountain of course they better otherwise they're not <laughs> <laughs> there'll be riots you know it'd yeah. be crazy yeah. <laughs> that so i think you know for them to do something of that i think they'll they'll take that part out of tomorrowland for fantasy land but that's where i kind of agree with you uh christopher that i think of that if they do tomorrowland first that will lead then the next door open for them to leave that se area separate for uh fantasy land yeah definitely and with the tomorrow and the space mountains being a space mountain they're still putting those stairs there now i wonder maybe chris knew better is there a current emergency exit? you know where the current emergency exit stairs are because i'm wondering if they're kind of attached to the pizza planet building if they're building these new ones so they can eventually you know cut off that connection and demolish everything to the from the pizza planet to the launch bay, and they're just building a replacement emergency exit stairs. You know what I'm saying? No, I, I know what you're saying. And I'm not really sure where the emergency stairs are, but it does seem a little odd. That whole project over there by the by the exit of Space Mountain and, mm -hmm. and kind of near like the entrance to the Starcade or the mm -hmm. former Starcade is really interesting to me. It like it, again, it, it feels like preparation. It feels like they're mm -hmm. setting something up for the the bulldozers to come in for 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 tomorrowland like you yeah. said ethan 
it, it, I just feel like they're, they're prepping it. They're getting everything in place. So when they come in with bulldozers, they have everything in order. Um, that whole project is very, very interesting to me. It's still not, it's still not done, right? It's still behind yeah, it's still tarps. Done, and yeah, it, still. and the same thing with the, the facade entrances by Toy Story and Star Tours are still, um, well, then the, the scrims down for the rain. Nothing's been done. It's still all ripped out. So, you know, it's kind of interesting. And it's almost like the Imagineering story is setting sort of like the the notion of that all this is going to happen without them actually saying what's going to happen. It's like they're throwing in these little Easter eggs <laughs> that Disney wants to do that's saying, okay, it's right there in front of you, but you're just not seeing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I completely agree, George. And, and like, that, like that thing at the end of episode three with Joe Rohde, you know, looking at Tomorrowland, taking off the Star Wars Launch Bay building. Yeah, that's kind of them. That's kind of the Imagineering story saying, hey, look, you know what? Wink, wink. They're working <laughs> on a new Tomorrowland. Joe Rohde's, you know, probably going to be the head Imagineer on that project. And especially you know. since you said it was the Launch Bay, that they already now have Galaxy's Edge. So what more of a building to rip open or rip apart is the launch bay. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. And that, and that's like the biggest building in Tomorrowland. I mean, you, you remove that building, you can put all, that's a lot of real estate there to put something, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, that, that's a huge amount of property. You can put a big e-ticket in there probably. I mean, that's Come a massive. On. Come on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, I hope. <laughs> from, from your lips to God's ears, George, from your <laughs> lips to God's ears. <laughs> oh, now what's interesting is, even though it was a simple paint job, I still found it interesting that Autopia recently, last month, went for about a two-week refurbishment, which is very interesting that they, I would have think they would just not put any money in there, even if it was a simple paint job, if they're just, you know, just going to completely demolish it. But although it was the building, so maybe they can they find another purpose for that, the Q building, but then not the actual ride itself. They are just not very interesting. Well, well, in terms of Autopia, this is the thing we also have to understand is that any new Tomorrowland is going to be at least a few year, a few years off anyway. So they're mm-hmm. probably not going to, we're not going to get it until at least after Mickey and Minnie run uh, railway, which opens, I think in like 2022 or something. Mm-hmm. So them repainting it, you know, I mean, we still have like two, three years before they even start a new Tomorrowland. So you still kind of have to upkeep things in the meantime. Mm-hmm. So I, I wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't be discouraged too much about that. I, I think that, that that's just maintenance that they have to do in the meantime because they know the new Tomorrowland is at least a few years off. Yeah. Oh, and according, I think according to my chat, my chat is something, um, I guess I'll hope it doesn't go down like, Again in the spring for it, but this time still nothing to do with the ride, but to change the queue and like kind of make more space or something. That'll be an interesting project to watch because it has nothing to do with the ride, but they're going to change like the, the queue portion in Tomorrowland. You enter and exit. Could be another stepping stone project there. And then, uh, what's that? Oh, and but speaking of Beauty and the Beast, you mentioned it, George. Uh, we know it's not going in Snow White's location because it's getting no. a big leap for soon, which I'm quite happy about. I'm, sad, I'm, I'm glad they're keeping up the classic Dark Rides. And I'm glad that Hanumanshin and Indiana Jones are also joining the, right, the bridge we working again. I mean, I still would love to see Beauty and the Beast end up at Disneyland. Nothing would make me more happier. But I was very skeptic and apprehensive that if they were going to take out Snow White and Pinocchio, and I thought, and I get it, they're older classic attractions, but that's what makes it especially <laughs> familiar, for me anyways. And I thought, they took yours out. you know, they could take, you know, uh, do something over with the Fantasyland Theater or somewhere there. But I thought, don't take out Snow White and Pinocchio. And then when I saw that there was going to be a, a, a refurbishment at the ending for the attraction, I thought, okay, well, they're not going to put money into something that they're going to eventually want to take down in a couple of years. Yeah. I mean that that's it. Yeah. The snow white thing is different than Autopia because the snow white thing is like they're, they're adding show scenes they're adding projections. They're adding technology. They're plussing it. They're making it more attractive for guests. This isn't just a paint job. So yeah, that's definitely, I think this, this news about snow white secured its place at Disneyland, which is great Mm -hmm. news. Snow white was the very first animated film ever. 
It was Walt Disney's baby. Like it deserves representation at Disneyland. You know, I mean, it deserves a, a, the, this attraction. Um, it's such a milestone movie. How do you, how would you not have a park without a Snow White attraction? And it's especially just, when you're standing there right in the center of fantasy, <laughs> like right in front of it. And you see, uh, the, the queen peeker head out in <laughs> uh, with the curtain mm-hmm. and just push it back. I, like, I could just stand there and just watch her for like 30 minutes, just moving the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> It's great. It's really, really great. I, I'm, I was really happy to hear that they're at, they're plussing Snow White, and especially after what they did with Alice in Wonderland a few mm. years back. Um, it, it was really cool how they seamlessly integrated, like, you know, the projections and everything with Alice. I thought they did a phenomenal job. And if they do anything as close to that, what they did with Alice, I think Snow White's going to turn out really good. And Snow White has like one of the wor- right now has one of the most abrupt worst endings of any dark ride. So if they're going <laughs> to fix that and address that, that's a positive thing. That's a good thing. I'm really happy mm-hmm. to hear it, you know? Yeah. Cause it just kind of ends. It's just, it's all dark and, it says happy ever after. I'm sorry. I love this attraction. I love this attraction, but I'm sorry. No one can argue with me. Mr. Toad's Wild Ride has the worst ending that any ride can. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I like right? the. the oh, no, it's great. No, it's great. But I'm saying, like, as far as the storyline goes. Oh, yeah. I can't you crash, you're dead. Boom, the ride's over. So you stay <laughs> dead. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the my favorite part of Mr. Toes will always be that the heat in the hell room because it's oh so yeah nice. I love that I, I I love that but now speaking nice. of those now are those Mr. Toad's Wild Ride Pinocchio are they eventually going to get the upgrade treatment because I heard like a I couple years so. ago that they were supposed to do all the dark rides at Disneyland yeah they were supposed to do that a while ago I I, I remember hearing rumors of that I think for the 60th anniversary that all the classic dark rides were going to get this the Alice in Wonderland treatment. I hope so. Mr. Toad is one of, is probably one of the best rides they have on that main strip for Fantasyland, and they can do so much with the new technology. Imagine like when you go to when you go to hell with the mm-hmm. projection mapping they have now, making it look mm-hmm. like fire. And all. I mean, you could do so much. Um, so yeah, George, I I really hope they they touch uh, Mr. Toad eventually. I mean, why not, dude? That's like that, that's like a great ride. It really mm-hmm. is, and I'm I'm still very jealous that you guys still have it. That we don't have it over here, because. <laughs> but you know what? To be fair, though, you guys have some pretty cool stuff. You guys have still have Carousel of Progress. You still have the People Mover, and do you guys still have Country Bear Jamboree or no? Yes, we do. Uh, in yeah. Frontierland. Yeah. Yeah. You got you guys. You know, Florida still has a pretty a lot of great stuff now, on the roster. Um. So I assume that if all this does come into. Uh, fruition with the the dark rides i guess that would be part of um what is it project pixie dust stardust <laughs> yeah which is funny to me that they called it project stardust because wasn't that the wasn't that the code name for the death star in rogue one? Oh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's kind of dark that's kind of dark for disney yeah. huh <laughs> <laughs> although i guess it makes sense because they're doing it in preparation for the massive Star Wars crowd, so it's a nice Star Wars tie-in. Wait, maybe, <laughs> that's, maybe that's the maybe that's the 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 keynote there. You know, Project Stardust. So think of what Rogue One's all about. So that means all the original content, everything just dies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone dies. Oh man, but yeah, the with the <laughs> Indiana Jones, it's a see, I never. Because that was only one when it opened, so I never really written it with every all the fa- all the effects working. You guys probably have, so I'm excited by the end of this refurb that hopefully most of the effects will be working again. But they plan to fix it, so it seems like I can write it like when it was in 1995 again. Yeah, I, I hope so, and I hope they add. It, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but at Tokyo Disneyland, they have essentially the same exact attraction that we do in the Indiana Jones ride, mm-hmm. but they have this really cool like tornado effect i don't know if you've seen it online it's pretty, oh, it's heard pretty about dope. It. yeah it's pretty dope i would love to see that i would love to see them add some cool stuff like that to our indie you know like why not you're in there why not give us a little extra <laughs> <laughs> yeah and oh you guys don't have indiana jones in florida huh? well, no we have uh dinosaur well, which is the same layout same ride vehicle and everything but 
Indiana Jones is one of my, I'd say my one of my top five favorite attractions at Disneyland. Mm. Oh yeah, very good one. I always has a nice wait time. Yeah, and then Han- so I guess Haunted Mansion Holiday will be going extended this year. I, I was confused. Does it's because I don't see it on. Is it gonna Haunted Mansion Holiday goes to January twentieth now? Because the refurbishments are January twenty first. So I think I read that Hanum, I took it as Hanumation Holiday goes extend, which is pretty cool if you like that. If you like the Hanumation Holiday, and I guess nothing special is coming to Haunted Mansion. It's just kind of interior fixes or something. Yeah, they're just gonna. They're, I I read the press release yesterday. It looks like they're just gonna um kind of clean everything up make it look nice um you know probably a lot of stuff that we don't even see you know maybe they're going to replace <laughs> some mechanics and the animatronics and things like that which is cool i mean i'm happy with that it's a classic attraction you want to make sure that's going to be around for a lot longer mm-hmm. so cleaning up you know the the mechanics cleaning up the projections cleaning up whatever you can to ensure that it's going to look by, good and, for and you by, to when great. you mean and when you mean clean up they you just mean add more dust and cobwebs yes exactly. yeah exactly <laughs> yes and exactly. then um i'm not sure if you know i've mean, seen chris but um in front of mission breakout there's all these construction walls i'm not quite sure what's what they're doing? Uh, are they just are they redoing the pavement like they did before? Do you know? Because I've been I was also very curious. Because yeah, I haven't. I you know it's funny. I saw those too. Where like when you first walk into the Mission Breakout your courtyard, it's like they yeah. have like this section. It looks like from the pictures, at least, it looks like it's they've cordoned off the trolley tracks because you can mm-hmm. still get into the area, but that I think that there's a huge middle section that's under a construction wall. I am guessing, and this is just my, my conjecture. I don't know for sure. I'm guessing they're going to, they're going to do the same kind of like um, design work they did for the trolley tracks in front of the fast pass area. I think they're probably going to extend it out a little bit. It seems like that's what they're going to be doing. Cause it it looks like they've, they've kind of, they've kind of, uh, cordoned off the the tracks you know it's, it's more mm-hmm. the track because it's kind of in the middle right yeah it's kind of, yeah it's kind of in the middle you can go around it but it's just like right in the middle almost like when the main street vehicles were closed and disneyland had the middle blocked off like that. yeah they're probably gonna add that crazy tile work they added earlier um so it's probably gonna st- extend out a little further to where like the pavement meets that stretch before the Hyperion Theater. So they'll probably add that to the same design, which is cool. Uh, I actually, you know, it's funny, that 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 weird design, if you would have told me they were doing that, I would have cringed. <laughs> but, but in execution, it actually turned out really cool looking. It actually matches the, the, the craziness of Mission Breakout a lot better. Yeah. You know, because I think having that traditional brickwork in front of like the really wild and crazy Mission Breakout felt a little jarring. So that that new tile work matches so much more, so much, so much more. I don't know. It just meshes better with it, and so uh, I'm cool with it. If they extend that out a little bit, that's fine. Yeah. And it makes a nice, clear definition between like Hollywood Land and Marvel or Avengers Campus. So that's even better because they have their traditional brickwork, and then it changes, and they're like, "Oh, I'm in my Mar- Avengers Campus now." So that's good. Yeah. Which leaves Hollywood Land with only one attract, one actual ride. That's crazy. But um, see, hopefully that Coco dog ride comes somewhere in uh, here in the next few years. But um, but speaking of um, Avengers, this, with the success of Rise of the Resistance, do you think Spider Man will be better than you anticipated? Better than what? Better than you like. Yeah, what do you think Spider-Man will be your expectations? I, I think Spider-Man is going to be the same way of how Smuggler's Run opened, where it was pretty much self-explanatory, still very nice, very thrilling, yeah. you know, appeases to the audience. But I think it's going to be the next e-ticket in Marvel Land, um, the one where you're battling with the Avengers Mm-hmm. And I think that's where the technology is going to take it one step further than Rise. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's the thing too, is like, um, yeah, I think, you, I think you hit the nail on the head, George. I think it's going to be, Spider-Man is going to be the smuggler's run of Marvel Land. It's going to be the, a mm-hmm. nice, 
D ticket fun, but um, I don't think it's going to blow any minds. You know, I think it's going to be, it's not going to even touch rise of the resistance. And then when, when the new Avengers ride opens, like in a few years, I think that's going to be the big E ticket. Like, like George said, like the big rise mm-hmm. of resistance moment, you know, um, mm-hmm. I just wish they would open both at the same time though. You know, I know, I know Bob yeah. Jebeck likes these phased openings, but I think that, I don't know, because Marvel Land is so small as it is. I, I think it would have benefited from having both of those attractions opening and have the land ready to go. But, you know, mm-hmm. it is what it is. At least we're getting it eventually. <laughs> yeah. all, and at least all Marvel I, Land has at least two attractions, you know. All I know is that with this new Avengers e-ticket, when they said you start out in the, the jet, and then your your seats speculation of course your seats eject and then you're flying into the that's what i want i want it to be that i don't want it to be nothing else so it's like i'm putting the pressure now on disney they have to do it that way (laughs) no i completely agree and i actually credit to uh i think it was dsny yes yes it was that, that reported on that and uh yeah i hope he got that correct because i would love that you know, to be, to start off like a Star Tours kind of experience where you're all together, and then your ship goes down, and you have to eject out of it, and you're all then you then you go off on your own thing. You're like in a separate like, you know, little seat, and you kind of go off. You know, like, like sort of how, you know, or or even more to even plus it. You know, like how they have like those conveyor belt things like for um, uh, dry cleaning. Like, so <laughs> oh, you yeah. have, so you start out in the ship, and then as you eject, everyone just goes their own route. And it's like- <laughs> that would be so cool. That would be so cool. I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna do. I think they're gonna do amazing things with the Avengers E ticket. I think they're gonna go all out with that one. Yeah, Spider Man is gonna be the Smuggler's Run. It's gonna be the the ride that people enjoy. It's fun. It's cool. But I think it's not gonna. I don't think it's gonna blow anyone's mind. You know, it's gonna be just. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, what? and that's okay though. And that's okay. Not every ride has to be an A plus plus. DCA California Adventure needs these kind of experiences these kind of family friendly everyone can go on it kind of experiences that's the one thing that DCA is lacking well and especially since that they took a huge risk with a park like DCA and taking out a Bugs Land because yeah. Bugs Land had like that one section that you can take your little ones there mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden it, there's like nothing there now so <laughs> you 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 have to have that that contrast that you know, you have to have a ride for everyone and then a ride maybe for not so everyone. Yeah, no, exactly. They took out Bugs Land. They got to have a family friendly attraction to kind of replace that. So I'm sorry, I, I still think- pass by that area and I just still imagine a Bugs Land and I just hear taps. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I have to say something. I didn't really love the attractions in Bugs Land, but what I did love about Bugs Land was the area music. And I yes, know that sounds that, like that, a- that's that's what hit for me. It was yeah. just the, the scope, the area. I don't think I even went. Well, no, I, I did go on Heimlich's Choo Choo Train. I, I will admit that. I like that one. Yeah. yeah. That. But <laughs> other than that, and then I did the It's Tough to Be a Bug in the theater. But I mean, I just basically just used a Bugs Land just as a walk around, just take in everything and then of course it was a, a shorter distance for at the time it was tower of terror so i just took like a beeline to it <laughs> no pun intended <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like it was very shady that was on a hot day you just kind of hang out over there and it's, you feel like you feel like you're an ant which is a point but i like it that was really cool and to what they took it away at least you can get on fixed flyers still as the emotional emotional whirlwind that's it. Yeah, I know it's funny about that. I actually, I've only gone on Emotional Whirlwind one time. It was a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And it's funny when you, when you stand on the outside watching that attraction, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, that's a baby ride, you know? <laughs> but, then when you, <laughs> but then when you get on it, it's like, wow, this is actually kind of thrilling though. It's weird. Like it actually, mm-hmm. you're higher than you think you are and you kind of move faster than you thought you would. It's actually really fun. I actually really enjoyed it. <laughs> Imagine, especially at night, because it's all lit up at night with the, the balls and everything. Then it's a get nice view. You have the Incredicoaster circling around you, and you have a little bay over there. It's a pretty cool, pretty cool little little. Now, bar. Ethan, I, Ethan, I wanted to ask you because you had mentioned briefly about Coco, 
Mm-hmm. Ob- obviously, it would have to go somewhere with within Pixar Pier. Where would you say would be the appropriate area to play? Oh, one hundred percent the Paradise Gardens area. Take out the whole corner, right next to Goofy Sky School, put it right there because they have the Coco stuff there anyway. And they have the celebration and the little puppet guy. That's a perfect place for it to go right there. Even if you have to take out Goofy Sky School, take it out. <laughs> you know what, Ethan? You touched upon a really interesting point. Like you said, that they already had the Coco stuff there. The Disney has shown in the past that they, they tend to put meet and greets and, and things in certain areas to test before they put an attraction. And what I mean by that is they used to have um, they used to have a Tarzan meet and greet around the area of the Swiss, at the then Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse like in the 90s okay Mm -hmm. and then it ended up being the trust family swiss uh, then it ended up becoming the uh, tarzan treehouse right Mm -hmm. um before toontown right right in the small world area like the mall area Mm -hmm. they used to have a (laughs) what they called the disney afternoon live and it was basically um little houses of the disney afternoon characters and everything very temporary but it was kind of like it was like they were testing Toontown before they opened Toontown. Uh, it takes so, me back to the 90s. <laughs> the 90s, the beautiful 90s. And, and so Disney does that. At least they used to do that. I don't know if they do it so much anymore, but they, but they do that. They, they'll put meet and greets and things in areas that they think that they're going to put in attraction to kind of test the response. So the fact that their Coco meet and greet and all that is in front of the Paradise Gardens area kind of shows me they're at least thinking about it you know mm. Mm. and i think they actually i think they probably still do it chris because i mean marvel land before is even announced or even maybe thought of spider-man everyone met in hollywood land they still do and that's the same it's in the same area so i feel like exactly. they still do that thing so exactly that's it could be because it's a good thing to look out for yeah no you make a great point with like they had spider-man black panther all the Marvel characters in Hollywood land before they built Marvel land. It's another example. That's a recent mm-hmm. example. So they, they, they tend to do that. They tend to do that. So I think there's a good chance if they're testing Coco in that area, they're thinking about putting them in there. And I hope they do. Spanish culture, Mexican culture deserves a place in California adventure. Mexican culture is a huge part of California in general. Mm-hmm. That on top of the fact that we have a whole pier dedicated to Pixar, it's like the perfect thing. Like, just <laughs> yeah. do it. You know, it's perfect. And even that could have been a test, too. I mean, yeah, there's Toy Story Mania there already, but I mean, Toy Story there was first, and then now it's Pixar Pier. So it could have been uh, kind of kind of example of a test of a meet and greet for a whole renovation. So, yeah, I think that's it. I hope Coco goes there because, like I said, it's a nice spot for the festival. That I don't know if you've been, but you know the little um the the show. What's that show called? Where's really, little puppet, the Coco Pup Miguel puppet? There, it's like a nice little area and gathers decent amounts of crowds too. It's not like no one watches it. There's and a- I think with a lot of the entertainment cuts that Disney has been doing lately, I think Coco would be the perfect thing to kind of revive that notion with the attraction, yeah. the music the performers, the puppetry, I think that would like that area, especially because you have that long stretch right before you get to Goofy Sky School from picks from the pier. I think that would be perfect. No, I agree, George. And then you can even add like maybe like a little Mexican, really authentic Mexican eatery nearby. That would do phenomenal. I mean, I, I, yeah, that would be so good. I mean, that would be there, there's so much potential there with them with a cocoa ride. I mean, they have to do it. They just have to do it. Man. And so it brings back to the next question of I ask this all the time, but I still I don't know. All these ideas are going somewhere else. So the Hollywood land, what what IP or classic Hollywood or what IP, what would you want to go there? Enti- or at least they're just the back line. You keep the main strip, or at least the back line. Assuming the Eastern Gateway and all that stuff goes through, you have all that land. What would you want there? Well, I think I think for for me personally, I mean, we're getting a lot of Marvel. We're gonna have Mission Breakout, the Avengers E ticket, and we're gonna have Spider Man, and we're gonna have a Doctor Strange like stage show. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So I think I, I would want Hollywood land to kind of do dip into other things. So I would like to see, I, I mean, ideally I would have preferred to see Mickey and Minnie's runaway railway going there, but that's already at Disneyland. So we can't do that, but I want to see stuff like that. I want to see other brands represented in California adventure. Um, Cause right now it's going to be after Marvel, it's going to be very heavy in the Pixar <laughs> and the Marvel. So I want to see mm. like some classic Disney in Hollywood land and things like that. And to kind of balance the park out a little bit. I actually agree with you, Christopher, on that, because especially since Hollywood land segues from Buena Vista street. So that was like the, the era that Walt came with the classic black and white cartoons and how, you know, it originated like when he lost the rights to Oswald, the lucky rabbit and how Mickey was conceived and everything. So, yeah, I think, being that there's a lot of Pixar, a lot of Marvel more so present in the park now within the next couple of years, I would like for Disney to kind of take one step back a little bit and look at their own entities and make classic Disney within that. Cause especially even the backlot area, now that they have Pixar Pier to ha have Mike and Sully to the rescue there, it it's completely out of character source because yeah. you got yeah. Pixar Pier and then you got a whole nother Pixar attraction on the opposite end of the park. Yeah, no, exactly. You're right. You with know, a meet would, and greet I, with a meet and greet of Black Widow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Captain Marvel over there. <laughs> yeah, you know, they, they just have to figure that whole area out. You know, it's like no man's land right now. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. I mean, yeah, I, I would get rid of Mike and Sully, even though I do like that dark ride, I would get rid of it. They can even throw some of the elements from that attraction, maybe on Pixar Pier somehow, really utilize some of that stuff. But um, wait, I'd like to wait, see some classic. I, I, just, I just had an epiphany. They put two and two together. What if Boo became Black Widow? <laughs> you know, there was always an identity crisis there between the two of them so. yeah that's, that's true that's true <laughs> Boom, why did I actually change her hair color camera Russian spot <laughs> <laughs> man and so yes um, well yeah but so speaking of Disney World George we'll give you your thoughts on Epcot since there's you still mentioned before a lot was announced at Epcot so are you excited about all those additions coming or do you hate some of them or love some of them <laughs> no I'm I'm looking forward to it completely because based on how you guys were talking about the entrance for uh, Tomorrowland of how uh, Christopher I think he was talking about um, it in one of his videos that it seems like Disney is kind of going back into sort of kind of going backwards to move forwards. They're bringing that classic nostalgic feel to it. And I think that's where the, their next approach is going to be for Tomorrowland based on the notion of how they're doing the entrance. I think that's like the pinnacle point where it's like, okay, this is where you're going to enter Tomorrowland and it's going to look like this. And I think that's where they're going with Epcot as well. Because when I was at the expo, when they showed all the concept art and released all this information, it has that traditional, original, nostalgic, somewhat retro look of how Epcot was in the 80s. And I love that. And I love how it proclaims to, you know, with nature and discovery and water and all those natural elements of how really Walt wanted it for it to be a prototype community of tomorrow. And everything that I could honestly say I looked at everything and everything that's coming in. I'm not disappointed with it. The only thing that I'm disappointed with right now is just the massive construction walls for it to get to that point. <laughs> yeah. You know, one of the, one of the, one of the things that really impressed me with the, uh, with the Epcot plans was that Walt statue. I, I think that's such a perfect thing because like Disneyland is really Walt's park, right? That was his baby. But Epcot was his baby too, you know? And I love to see him having, even if it's in statue form, a presence at this park that he really loved so much. And I know it's different than, than the park that he envisioned, but the, the spirit is still kind of the same idea. Yeah. So, so I'm really happy to see that wall statue. I love it. what they did with the statue, that it's not just a statue of him doing a pose or looking upon... 
it is actually an intimate portrait, so to speak, in statue form that he is literally sitting on a step, you know, with his legs on his, uh, with his arms on his legs and just like gazing upon the park of what, as you said, Christopher, not exactly what he envisioned, but to know that it actually became a reality in some point, you know, after he was gone. So I, that was, that was the one point of the presentation when I was at the expo that I actually got the chills when yeah. they showed that, that statue. Yeah. If, if they, if they were to change anything within the concept art, they could change everything and say, Oh, we'll tweak this. We'll tweak that. But that statue has to stay the same. I agree. That statue was, was the, 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 the best part for me, at least, you know, I mean, I, I really loved that statue. Wait, so you mean to tell me your favorite part wasn't the target se segment? Yeah. <laughs> right. oh, my favorite part. <laughs> yeah. When the, when the target CEO came out for 20 minutes. <laughs> I can't wait for the target attraction to come to California to venture. <laughs> I mean, during that whole segment that the best part that had the pulse is when they brought the dog out. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I, that you know what though that d23 <laughs> parks panel aside from a few nuggets of coolness was a pretty big letdown i think <laughs> yeah. i yeah because it was more so i mean the highlight for me was the step in time sequence when dick van dyke came out when they were announcing that there's going to be a mary poppins attraction at the uk pavilion that was the best part that's what i was looking forward to for the whole span of the presentation. And we only got a little part of it. And it was like, I did enjoy the presentation, but then it just made me think, was it really worth waiting overnight to see this? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sorry. Target is way more important than your UK <laughs> attraction. Okay. You gotta make that money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's funny too. They spent so much time on Target and my local Target has one of those new, um, you know, hey, Ethan, you kind of live close to me. You know Topanga Mall, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I heard it was coming there. The little pop, the Disney pop. That, oh, that's a big target. That's a two-story target. It's a two-story target. And yeah. I think that they have – I haven't been there in a few weeks, but I think they have one of those Disney stores because they have one section that's huge with mm -hmm. all the Frozen 2 stuff. And it's oh, massive. Yeah. It's like oh, its own wow. department, you know? Oh, right. wow. I should go over there and take a selfie and say, thanks, D23. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. So, now, the other parts, there are some parts that weren't announced for Epcot, like the were Journey to Imagination. What do you think was going to happen? Do you think, some people think he's going to leave? Some people think that's going to stay? What do you, I don't I, know much um, about that one. I, I think, honestly, Figment is going to keep his presence in the park. I think he is the, the mascot. He is the representation of that, aside from the, reali the realistic side of Epcot, that as far as, like, for a child's point of view, Figment, uh, don't get me wrong, you don't have to be a child to love Figment. I'm an adult <laughs> and I love Figment. But I think he, his presence as far as, like, um, with merchandise and, and uh, like the, the pass holder gifts, like with the magnets and the coasters and everything. I think Figment is going to stay. He's far too abroad already now in the Disney community to just take him out like that. Now, as far as the attraction itself, I think it's going to stick around for a little bit, but I don't see it staying forever because all this new stuff that's coming in, it all meshes well, even with the seas with Nemo and friends it's going to mesh well with the journey into water with Moana. And even with li the living in the land and Soren, that still all fits together with the nature of things. And then you come over to the Imagination Pavilion where you have Figment. You know, I mean, I think that if they were to take it back to its original design with the Dreamfinder, I think that would mesh well. But the way that is now... I can for I think that would stick out like a sore thumb as far as the attraction goes. So I think eventually there was rumors that it was going to be something involving inside out. Wow. Well, I've heard something like that. Yeah, because I haven't I've been to Epcot, but I haven't been on that attraction. Or I don't remember it. I was like young. But I was like, interesting. So but that uh space restaurant looks pretty cool. 
How are you gonna are you gonna check that oh, one? Yeah. That, I that I cool elevator space two twenty. I love there's a con there's a piece of concept art that's actually done in Epcot right now that if you actually look at it, it shows the elevator of almost of how high it is in order to get up to the space station for dinner or mm -hmm. breakfast or lunch. But the elevator is not really there in reality, but they just put it there so people's perception can say, okay, well, this is how we get up there. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm very curious to see the technology that's put into this just for a restaurant. And I think that if it's as successful as I think it's going to be, I think, again, that's going to pave the way for them to use expensive technology just to theme a restaurant. Well, and, and if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, Space 220 has no IP attached to it, right? No. No. So that's, I mean, you know, people give, uh, people give uh, Bob Chapek a lot of crap, you know, for, for stuff. But, I mean, this is a new, a, a high-budget restaurant that's not going to have any IP attached to it. That's, that's saying something. I mean, you know, that's a win. <laughs> I'll it take actually, it. <laughs> it actually kind of reminds me of, like, the Skipper Canteen over at the Magic Kingdom. It's sort of fused with the storyline of the Jungle Cruise. But as of right now, the Jungle Cruise doesn't have an IP until like the movie comes out, which I don't know really how that's going to change the attraction. But just right now, the restaurant is designed for it to be like the off-duty skippers have a place to go and put all their relics and artifacts and kind of mingle with the guests on their days off of not being the skipper on the boats. It's cool. Very mm. cool. So I think cool. that's how 220 is going to mesh in, like being adjacent to Mission Space. Yeah, I mean, that's I kind of figured that too, because the theme is like a cohesive thing. It almost looks like part of the same building, but like a cohesive theme. So George, favorite attraction to Epcot? Right uh, now? Favorite new, favorite... It could oh. be new or it could be coming or like, uh, or most excited for or current. Right now, I'm, oh, Lord. Um, there, there's a few, but I'm really excited for the Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, oh, good. I was hoping you'd say that. Cosmic one. Rewind. That one was really I'm cool. I'm a thrill junkie. So the whole notion of launching backwards into space with a rotating vehicle yeah, they're talking my language. <laughs> <laughs> now, I have to ask you, because I've never been on a backwards roller coaster. Okay. Does it feel as intense going backwards? Because you're not getting that same – Does it? what's the More, feeling? When you go backwards, what it does is <laughs> it pushes you back. But while you're being pushed back, it, it's a different sensation than actually – have you been on the Hulk? No. no, you haven't been on the Hulk because you haven't been. That's right. Yours yeah. have. It, it has that brief moment of uh, weightlessness that when you're being pushed back, you're being forced back. But since you're going backwards, that as you're going up, whether you're going up in a, in a loop or a corkscrew or just going up a hill, you feel that, weightless, that weightlessness because from being sucked in, and then you're released, so you're like this. <laughs> so you're oh sucked in, and then it feels like you're released. And then, yeah, it, it's it's a different kind of intensity. Yeah, yeah wow, that's, that's crazy. Cool. The only one I've been on is um, at Universal, Avenger the Mummy. And it kind of pushes you back, and you go, I and mean, it feels kind of weird, but it feels kind of cool at the same time. I just was sort of longer. But it would seem more intense, only because you go faster on the launch part. But if I was launched backwards, I feel like it would be interesting. But and then, um, and then, as I said, with with the the vehicle then spinning, yeah, not like a full yeah. spin, but like it'll turn to what direction yeah, you're supposed to see. I mean, like, I have a feeling I'm going to come off of that. It's like, whoa, take me back to Woodstock 1970s, man. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm jealous because I want something like that here. <laughs> I just don't know where it could go. Maybe in a third park, but that can't happen with the Angel Stadium. Gosh, I was hoping they had moved. I saw, I saw that, and I was so disappointed. I thought for sure that if they, if they were going to put something, that would have been the perfect area. So, 
so I okay, so I saw I don't know if you guys saw Dave uh, from Fresh Bakes video on that the whole subject about yeah. the Angel Stadium. Yeah. Yeah. And then he ended the video with like, well, this is the nail in the coffin for the third park. I, I disagree actually with that. Yeah. Cause there's a because whole story for the park. In the lot. Exactly. The exactly. The, the angel lot was never meant to be the spot for the third park because that was just kind of a recent kind of like fan. What if scenario because of the drama that the team was having with the city but Disney bought a the, the Toy Story lot is 100 acres, and they yeah, bought and that California Adventure 69. Yeah, and California Adventure only like 60 something acres. Disneyland's like 85. So 100 acres is a good chunk of land. Well, and Magic Kingdom at Walt Disney World is 105 acres. Right. So yeah. it's on it's on par with, with yeah. Magic Kingdom and Disneyland. So people forget like when Disney bought, cause it used to be a strawberry patch, a strawberry field. They bought that <laughs> land. It sat there for a while. Disney had to develop the land or they were going to lose it. Anaheim was going to tell them that they had to give it up because they weren't doing anything with it. So they built a parking lot. I think that's where we're going to see the third park. I think they just put the toy story lot there because they needed to do something with it. And a parking lot is easy to rip up if they need to rip it up again. It's not like a building or a structure. It's, it's just asphalt. Well, do you think that's also to the notion as why they're building so many um, parking garages around the area that they wouldn't even need the Toy Story lot anymore? That's a good possibility, George. Yeah, because now that they have the Pixar Pals, um, they don't, there's, there, there's not the need for that Toy Story lot as much as there once was, you know? Mm -hmm. And also remember that they also bought the Carousel Inn, which they destroyed, mm -hmm. and the land behind it because they were going to do the Gateway Project. Remember, they were going to build the parking structure on that side. Mm -hmm. and yeah, the that land was the is still there, right? They were going to build another structure if they want to build it. Yeah, I think they that's don't need the Toy like Story lot. They could put that third space. park right there. Yeah, so that's what I think. Now I, I didn't really pay too much attention to like where the lots are located because I never had a to go into any of their parking lots because usually when I stay, I just walk down Harbor Boulevard or West Catella Avenue or something. So where, of where the Toy Story parking lot is located, is it more adjacent to Disneyland? Is it more adjacent to DCA? Is, could there be any kind of connection that you could leave one park and then inter like intersect right into the third park? It, it's kind of it, it's kind of diagonal or adjacent to DCA. Yeah. It, it's like kind of like to the left of the convention center. Yeah. Okay. So you would need to it, you could you could technically walk it, but it would be a hike. They would have to realistically, if they were going to put a park there, have to extend the monorail for sure, yeah, or add a monorail over or something. Yeah, it would be some kind of a. In resort transport. And if people start complaining about that, well, it's going to be too much of a distance. Well, if they were going to tear down the Angel Stadium, can you imagine the distance from that? <laughs> it, it would have been even further. It would have been absolutely even further. So, um, yeah, I don't think the third park is dead. I think that that's where they've – I think could the Toy be? Story lot's always where they wanted it to go. Could mm -hmm. it also connect into downtown Disney? Mm, uh, you'd need a monorail again. Cause that's yeah. Okay. Because, because it's it's I mean, more it's clo it's the closest to the backside of of DCA than anything else. So you would have to yeah you would need a monorail or something to get over there, which shouldn't be a problem because people love Disney World so they should be okay with the monorail. Yeah, I mean the monorail system it takes you like fifteen or twenty minutes to get from one part to the next in some cases. So this would be no different. It would be like maybe a five minute monorail trip. Mm -hmm. Um. But I think that's where the I think that's where the third park's gonna go eventually. I think it's gonna be the Toy Story lot. There's plenty of room there to do it. Now this mm. is a wild card idea. If they decide to not do a third gate, which I really hope that they do, I would love to see a third gate. Of where it's located, could they actually expand DCA? I don't know um, because to the well, south is the convention center. I well, they could, you know, that transportation. Remember where they were going to do the Eastern Gateway project with that with that transportation hub on Harbor? Oh yeah, Hall? there. That's yeah. The, that they the, that's they're still planning to expand it there. But I mean, like yeah, outside of in terms of, like crossing the street. I mean, there's a parking lot to the west of it. Is that the Disneyland Hotel parking? Lot? So they would have to literally block a, a whole entire road in order. Yeah. For yeah, they'd have to go like build a 
something uh, uh, built uh, under the road. But there is a transportation plaza where if they move the monorail and do the Eastern Gateway thing, that's in the resort property line. But as far as crossing harbor and stuff, there's hotels and things, the convention center. But they could do, there's parking lots to the west if they really wanted to change streets. Because after all these changes with DCA, like after Marvel Land is completely done and they do some upgrades to Hollywood Land, there's not too much left for them to do with DCA. So I would think that they would, aside from Tomorrowland and Fantasyland at Disneyland, that they would have to have another park. Yeah, to go. yeah no, the, an, a third park is, is, in a, is basically an inevitability. I mean, if they want to continue to make money, they're going to have to eventually look at a third park, you know? And I, I think that... Um, it's going to happen. It has to, like you said, George, it has to happen. Yeah. They're, they're, we're running out of space. I mean, there's no other where, where there's nowhere else to go unless they bulldoze like the, the paradise pier in the Disneyland hotel and put a park there, which I'd be fine with. Yeah, <laughs> they want to do that, cool. but I don't think they will. <laughs> I, I think eventually something else is going to go there than the, the paradise pier. Yeah. I don't think that that hotel is going to last very long one way or the other. Yeah. According to, um, <laughs> on those forms, the dark beer, he said um, that hotel, they, Disney actually wanted to demolish it like years ago, but a, apparently so because they bought it and they re renovated it from this Japanese company. So no matter what they do, they guess they have to pay this Japanese company a lump sum for a certain amount of years. So I guess when that contract expires is when they can like demolish it. I don't know when, I think it expires in like 10 years or something. That's what I learned that recently on those forms. Because I was wondering why they kept that old thing there. But I understand. They said it, it made no financial sense to demolish it because they still have to pay even if they built a new whole album. So I know what, what I would love the new the theme to be for the third gate or even a fifth gate for Walt Disney World. Either one I'm happy with. I would just love to see it. As I said, it would the be villain. the villains. It would, yes. Ah. Yeah, it would be the villains. What, what do you guys think? I like that idea. A bunch of big Maleficent castle in the, or something in the, as the centerpiece. Pretty cool. I, I would love to see Westcott because we were supposed to get that originally. I would love to see Westcott because it kind of, I think it's a cool concept and then it kind of bookends Florida really nicely. You, you guys have Epcot. We have Westcott. It, it just kind of, it creates. And that's actually funny that you mentioned that, Christopher, because again, going back to the Imagineering story, that just came out of that just came out of left field. Yeah, that they decided to bring Westcott up again. Yeah, that Tony Baxter said he had everything ready; it was yeah. ready to go. So again, <laughs> is that them saying something without actually saying something? Yeah, I hope so. I would love to see Westcott. You know, I, and I know it would probably be a different park today than it, than they would have planned it a while back because I think they are more IP um obsessed you know i mean i think we would probably see more ip in that park but i think just the whole idea of having a west coast version of epcot in anaheim would be such a perfect bookend i hope so but we'll see you know it, it's a tough call i mean i think more than likely they're going to go with a franchise park you know something where it's going to be like you know um where they can put in all their brands yeah. a lot easier than I know that. a lot of people don't know this character but me being a disney geek that i am if they do decide to do a villains park i want bald mountain right in the center and at the very tippy top they have a gigantic animatronic chernabog <laughs> that would be pretty cool that would be pretty cool actually on a side note speaking of great villains i i was i'm like obsessed with disney plus now i watch all the stuff on there but um i was watching the black cauldron a few nights ago and despite the movie not doing well, it has a great villain. The Horn Print, the Horn King, or whatever, was was kind of like the uh, he was kind of like a, a a Maleficent, you know. He was very cool. He was just pure evil. I love that villain. Oh, yeah, he was the male version of Maleficent. <laughs> yeah, totally. He was totally. I wish the movie would have done well because it would have been cool to see him more in the parks, you know. Yeah, or they should at least like intertwine him into um, like Mickey's Not So Scary. Yeah, yeah. Because like, they have like the headless horsemen. They have like all the Disney villains that you don't normally see. That it would be cool that if they kind of 
because Oogie Boogie came back like full like full throttle. Like I mean, he was like nothing, and then like they just like now name something in his honor for a party event at DCA. So who knows? Maybe in time we'll see the Horn King. <laughs> yeah, maybe even does if it if the movie does well on Disney Plus, maybe they'll they'll bring him in. Mm-hmm. We'll just have to keep watching it like a hundred times. Like we'll just keep hitting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just let him know on the replay. <laughs> replay it while you're at work, just have it going in the background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, speaking of Westcott, that uh, we can they can still like insert IPs in there. Like yeah, you know what they do with the World Showcase? They're frozen in the Norway Pavilion, and that's true. Um, um, Ratatouille in the France. So they can still kind of blend the ideas, something like that, to keep the keep the dream alive so if they were to still do westcott then maybe that's why they're holding off on coco oh maybe that's yeah, true maybe. that's a good point george yeah because the mexican pavilion but but yeah chris is definitely right california should have do we have anything hispanic or mexican oh we do i think we have one restaurant in california eventually it's kind of mexican but it should have a big yeah big culture because i mean like over half the people live here i think over half are like hispanic or mexican so we should have a much bigger representation in the park it is because it was it was a huge culture shock for me because the first time i came out to disneyland that for me being living on the the east coast you know i have friends who are hispanic and mexican and everything but when i came over it was like whoa i can't believe <laughs> i've never seen so many hispanic people and mexican people all at once this is great, <laughs> this is great. i'm sure you had some great tacos the first time we came with some authentic yeah i will say that the west coast has much better mexican food authentic mexican food than yeah. over here because it was actually being made by people that know the food you know live the mm-hmm. culture and it's like it just gives that extra, extra touch of, uh, of uh, authentic cuisine. Oh, man, well, wow, we talked about a lot of stuff today. It's been oh, it's already one twenty-one. Well, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Please comment below on what your thoughts about all this and what topics you want us to talk about next time. So thank you all. Thank you, Chris, for joining us. And George for joining us. Go follow him at OrangeGo55 and Disney Family Man 123. I remember. And have a magical day.